Michael Carter, the second interception that led to the game-winning drive for the New York Jets. Yes, Sauce made a great play. We'll watch it here. But take note of the other guys. Mosley really makes something happen here. Joyner does a good job. Whitehead does a good job with the break. DJ Reed being on an island. And then Olbrick, Solomon Olbrick dialing up this play. Second and 15, listen, when looking at these plays, situation means everything. Everything. Second and 15 after the Steelers have a negative five yards on the first play. I forget what it was, fumble or something uh, with Warren, I believe. But uh, hey, second and 15, great shot here. Great chance to make something happen. Jets show double A gap show. Uh, it's three by one with a bunch. And I was talking with Blewett earlier, you know, I coach high school and you see a lot of three by one in high school, especially. And while it allows a lot of flexibility offensively, it also allows the defense a lot of freedom because automatic calls against three by one really give them freedom and really allow for coverages that can mess with the quarterback's mind. Three by one, you'll often see the, the solo side be locked. Man locked, so it's, it becomes like a man hybrid zone coverage where it, the quarterback doesn't exactly know what's going on. And if you roll the coverage a certain way to the strong side, to the bunch three by uh, three weapon side, it's not easy sometimes as a quarterback. So Steelers three by one, let's roll it through here. Double A gap show, Joyner bails. Mosley does not blitz. Decent four-man rush, but the play was not the rush. The play was the coverage downfield. Nice little shot by Pickens there. I know Jets fans wanted a flag, you know, okay. Jets could have used the flag there. You know, Salah would, like, would have liked it, but come on, this is football. Let's let that go. Definitely a cheap shot, but let's let it go. Sauce makes the play, baits him. It's not a classic Sandlot. Deion Sanders bait in that sense, but let's watch Sauce here from the jump. He's clearly playing a curl flat, hard corner type situation, but hard in the sense that he knows the sticks are at 15 instead of five. If they're not at 15, he's going to be a lot closer. So eyes, hip turned, backside to the sideline, exactly where you want him to be. A little close to Michael Carter, but that's fine. You kind of want him inside the furthest weapon. That's fine. Uh, number one read is going to be the outside weapon here. So he's going to read one and then two and then three. Since he's curled a flat and he's got three deep over him, it's really a cover six, cover six or three cloud. I think it's a six, but the responsibilities are much more important, which we'll go through. He's got to be careful. He's going to play hard corner unless there's two or three verts. And if there's two or three verts, then he's going to have to get depth. Because if one carries, if one goes, he might have to carry. And no, one's, no one threatens his curl to flat. If one and two go vertical, you know, post, corner, whatever, he's going to have to carry. And Michael Carter is going to have to clean up underneath. So that's the key here. You know, when, when you're playing zone in football today, especially the NFL, you're not going to spot drop to one spot and then just say, hey, I'm going to play this area and wait to see who comes in my area. No, it doesn't work that way. You want to match. One, two. Do they both go vertical? If so, Sauce has got to turn those hips and bail and get deep, you know, feeling the receiver's hips while keeping the eyes on the quarterback. If they don't, if one of them goes vert, you know, if his number one read goes vert, he passes it along to the deep half safety. And I'm going to call this a deep half because cover six, you're going to have quarters on the other side. Uh, but we'll show it to you in a second. So it all depends on what his primary and secondary reads do. Bunch. His number one and two are coming at him. Number three going in the flat. So Michael Carter right away. That should be his first read in the flat. Let's see. He knows he's there, but now he knows his number two read just spotted up right here. So he's not going anywhere because his number two reads in his hook zone. Sauce knows that one vertical is going to the safety. And then this secondary read is in his curl to flat. So get depth, keep the hips turned. Eyes on the quarterback right here. Pick it. Look into the solo side. DJ reads on him outside. Being on an island, you got to stay over the top. So he's outside. Squeezing him to the middle if he can because he knows he has another quarter. So Reed and Joyner are basically quarters here. Whitehead's basically a deep half. Sauce is a hard corner. And you got three hook zones. Uh, who's this? Quan. Quan is basically a hook zone uh, slash uh, flat to curl. If his read, which is the running back leaks out to the flat. 
which is what happens. So Pickett, looking left, has nothing. Now he's in trouble, four-man rush. And yeah, the four-man rush made something happen, but it was because of the coverage. Look at Mosley. Let's go back to the snap. Mosley, double A-gap show. Quan and Joyner bail. Mosley bails, looks to the bunch side. Depth, depth. If he continues going on this course, shuffling, they're screwed because this in route is going to be there because there's no way Whitehead could make that break and make the play. And Pickett is probably reading one to two to the in break. And once he gets to two, he's going to see Mosley there. So Mosley right here reading the quarterback, drifting back to the inside. Unbelievable play by Mosley. Whitehead break up there. Now you see the cover six kind of form, whatever you want to call it. It, it basically quarter, quarter, deep half. Whitehead has to get on that in-breaking route. And then you got hard corner with a hook, uh, a hook zone for uh, Michael Carter. Pickett, desperation, four-man rush, finally gets on him. It's a bad throw, but notice it from Pickett's point of view. You got the outlet here, Fryermuth. Sauce is kind of hidden. Sauce is playing that Sandlot bait style right here, where he's behind this weapon, the Steelers weapon right here, kind of baits him into a desperation throw on second and 15. That's fine. You want him to throw it here. That's the key with his defense. If Sauce is up on this guy, on his hip, the result doesn't happen this way. Maybe it's a sack, which is fine. Uh, maybe Pickett goes somewhere else and throws it away and you're going third and 15. But Sauce, knowing the situation, allowing this to be thrown to this man is what you want to see. Situation determines how you play coverage, how you play defense. And Sauce, great job right there. Attacking the arms, inside arm too. He plays it perfectly where he attacks with the inside arm. And at his length, there's no way that tight end's coming down with it. And then Michael Carter just beats Pickens. Look at Pickens. Come on, Pickens. Show me some. Show me something here. Dude. Show me something. You're on one of my fantasy teams. Michael Carter comes down with the pick. Great job all the way around. We'll watch it from the tight view too, but we're not going to get much insight from the tight view on this, I don't think. Uh, good job with the four-man rush, not giving up. Great coverage. Great job. And this is the most important thing. Great job understanding the situation. Four-man rush. Uh, really wide look there. Sauce, inside arm, attacks it. Momentum carries him to the sideline. Inside arm, swats it. Perfectly. Gotta love it. Michael Carter, Johnny on the spot, makes it happen. And this, my friends, is a huge defensive play that leads to Zach Wilson and the Jets win. <laughs>